If you want to convert mini DV tapes like these into a digital form, you're going to need a computer or laptop with a Firewire port. For me, I have a very old laptop and it does have Firewire. I'll show you what it looks like right now. There are many types of Firewire ports, but I have this one. I'm pretty sure it's called Firewire 400. I'll put a picture of all the Firewire port types. Now you need to have one of these. And if you don't have a Firewire port, I'll leave a link in the description for a video that is for Thunderbolt 3 or USB-C computers. Now I'm just gonna be using my laptop, which is in pristine condition. And we're gonna be using a Firewire cable to connect the camcorder to this computer. So this is what my camcorder looks like. And I just attached the cable because the battery just doesn't work. And we're gonna need to look at this part. There's a port over here that is listed as DV in slash out. This is the port that we need to connect to the computer. You will need a cable that can connect to this and to your computer's Firewire port. For me, I have a Firewire 400 to 400 cable and it looks something like this. It's a very small port, but it's very rare nowadays because it's old technology, I'm pretty sure. And what we're also gonna need is a USB drive that has Linux on it. This is super simple to make and it only takes five minutes and I made a video on it. So to convert these DV tapes to digital files, we're gonna be plugging this USB stick into the computer and then we will run Linux off of this USB drive. The reason I'm gonna use Linux is because the quality of the digital file is a lot better. I tried doing it on Windows, but the quality was really bad and the frames were really low too. Just go to linuxmint.com and download the Linux XFCE or Cinnamon Edition. Cinnamon looks the best, but XFCE is very lightweight and it can run on basically any flash drive. Now click download on the XFCE version or whatever you want, and then scroll down and then pick a server to download from. They do not host the ISO file on their website, but it doesn't matter which server you download it from, just pick any of them. If you want the flash drive that I got, it is really quick. It's a Samsung USB 3.1 drive and it has 64 gigabytes and it was about $10 on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. Now download Belena Etcher for whatever operating system you have and then open it up. Choose the ISO file that you just downloaded and then choose the USB drive. And this will erase the USB drive. So make sure you back up anything you wanna save and then click format. And then you'll have a Linux USB drive that you can boot off of any computer. So now I'm gonna plug this into the ThinkPad, which has a Firewire port. Now make sure the laptop or computer is powered off or you're gonna restart it. But before you do that, make sure you search up what the boot key is for this certain computer. For me, I know that the boot key for this ThinkPad is F12. If you also have a ThinkPad, it will probably be that too, but I don't know. Just search it up to make sure. But it will be different for every brand computer. So just search up your brand and then the boot key and it should tell you what the boot key is for that computer. So I'm gonna power on my computer and then click F12 to load up the boot menu. It should say entering boot menu and then I'm going to select the USB drive once this pops up. For me, it says USB HDD, which is hard, drive, hard disk drive, I'm pretty sure. If your USB drive shows up twice, just click on the first instance of that USB drive. For me, it only shows up once, so I'm just gonna click on the USB drive and click enter. And now it says start Linux Mint, which we're gonna do the first option. And then Linux Mint should load up pretty quickly, unless you got a really slow USB drive. It might pop up with a bunch of text before loading, but that's just normal. Okay, now Linux Mint is fully loaded up. You will need Wi-Fi for this one part. So go to settings or just click on this icon at the bottom right. It should be next to the Bluetooth icon if you have Bluetooth. If you can't connect to the Wi-Fi network from there, you could go to the bottom left and there should be a menu which you can click on. Then you can search for settings. There should be something like system settings. And then you can search for Wi-Fi in this settings menu. Now in this terminal, what we're gonna run is one command to install this program. We don't really need to update because we just installed this ISO file. The repository should be up to date enough. So what we're gonna do is type sudo apt install and then dv grab. If you've chosen another Linux distribution, it might not be apt for your package manager. So just install dv grab and then click enter and then it will download it pretty quickly. Now click enter to continue. Now this is a live Linux USB which means it erases itself every single time it boots up. So you're gonna have to run this command every single time it boots up. But it's just one command, so it's not really that inconvenient. But now that the download is done, it only took like 10 seconds. I'm just gonna clear this by typing clear. And now we're gonna be connecting our camcorder to this computer. 
So as I showed before, we're gonna be using this Firewire 400 cable. I'm going to open this panel and then I'll connect this end. They both have the same end for me. It's just a Firewire 400 four pin. And then I'll connect it to the DV in slash out right here. And then I have to connect the other side to my computer. This is also the Firewire 400 four pin port. I'm just gonna plug in the other side of the cable into this port. Now make sure your camcorder is on VCR mode. For me, VCR is on top, but whatever it is for you, just move it to VCR. So I didn't put a tape in yet, so I'm just gonna do that right now. You just push this forward and then it opens like that. And then we'll automatically open this slot. Make sure this line is at the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes in. If you put it in the wrong way, it won't let you actually close it. Like this, it won't let me put the tape in. So I have to turn it around like this. And now it'll let me put the tape into the camcorder. Now I'm gonna push it in. Okay, now I have a tape loaded up and when it's like this, it should be a blue screen. Now rewind the tape all the way to the beginning. For me, it's already at the beginning. So I'm just gonna place this over here. Now you don't need to touch your camcorder and then you just need to enter one command into this command line. Don't start the tape on your camcorder because this command will automatically start it. And once it's done, you can just stop it and then it will save. So what this is gonna do is record your tape and turn it into a digital file. So however long your tape is, is how long it'll actually take to convert it to a digital file. The command we're gonna do is DV grab but we're gonna have to put a dash size zero. The reason why we're putting this is because by default, DVGrab will split your video file if it gets too large and I want it to be in one file. So I'm gonna put it at dash size zero and then it will just never cut. There's something I forgot to mention here. As you know, when you record on a camcorder, you can store multiple recordings on a tape. So if you want this DVGrab to split every single time a new recording plays, then you can make it do that. So every recording will be its own video instead of making one whole tape with multiple recordings be one video file. So just copy this command to do exactly that. Now, as I said before, nothing from this USB drive will save. So if you wanna save this onto another hard drive, like your actual computer's hard drive, you can go ahead and open up the file explorer at the bottom left, and you should see your Windows hard drive. For this one, it says Windows 7, and then you can see all this stuff in there. And then you could right click here, and then open in terminal. And then you could do everything from there. For me, since I really don't care, I've already converted all of these tapes. So I don't care if this USB drive gets erased. You can also plug in another USB drive. And then once this tape has been converted, you can just move it to that USB drive and then unplug it. And then everything should be saved. You don't have to worry about your files being erased. Your camcorder should have a blue screen, but once we click enter, you should see it start to play. So now my camcorder has started and DVGrab is recording it. Now don't touch anything until the tape is fully been played. Then after the tape is completely done, you can go ahead and click Control C on your computer and then DVGrab will stop and it will save the file. So if you wanna see the file, you can go ahead and click LS and then enter. And you should see the file over here. It says dvgrab001.dv. This format might be readable on Windows, but we probably do not want to keep this as a .dv file because these files are very large. MP4 files are a lot more compatible with a lot of computers. So to convert this, what we're going to do is actually install another application. It's called FFmpeg. I've made a video on this before and then it should install. It takes about 10 seconds too. It's really lightweight. Now I'm just going to clear this once again. Then the command to convert is FFmpeg, then dash I. Dash I signifies that you want to input a file. So the file we're going to do is the dvgrub that we just recorded. And after that, we're going to specify a codec. I don't really know much about codecs, but the one that is compatible with most computers, it's H.264. And we can do that by typing lib x and then 264. And then next type dash a codec for audio codec. And then we're gonna do AAC. Then the next thing we're gonna specify is what we want the name of the file to be. I'm just gonna name it dv1.mp4. Now this is the full command. I'm gonna convert this .dv file to an mp4. Now you can copy this exactly if you want. Make sure this is the same name as the DV file you want to convert. You can also do a tab to autocomplete. So if I just wrote DV and I click tab, it would autocomplete to that file. If you have multiple DV files though, it might stop at this and you have to specify which number it is and then tab again. And then it will autocomplete what file you wanna convert. Now I'm just gonna click enter and then it'll take some time to convert. 
There might be some red error text, but just don't worry about that. Converting the file might take some time though. All right, now my file is converted. I didn't record the whole tape, so it was really quick, but if you have like a really long tape, then it will take a long time. Anyways, now if I type ls and enter, you should see this dv1.mp4 and then save this to a usb drive just connect another usb drive and then copy it over there or you can also open up the windows drive like i said and move this file over there If you want to know how to copy the file onto the USB drive or your hard drive from the command line, it's really simple. All you need to do is type cp and then the name of the file, which is dv1.mp4. So I'm going to type to autocomplete. Now you need to specify where you want to copy it to. And then where your drives are going to be located, it's going to be at slash media, and then slash mint, and then type slash. And then if you click tab again, it will show you all the drives that are there. For me, there's only one drive, so it'll just auto-complete. And then from here, just type where you want to save it in your hard drive. Then we can go to users, and then you can tab to see which users there are. For me, I'm not going to write that, but I'm just going to write username, and then dash. And then you can do desktop with a capital D, and then you can tab to auto-complete. And then you can copy it to there directly. I recommend just copying this file to a USB drive or your Windows drive on the file manager because it's a lot easier with the graphical interface. So go ahead and just copy the file and then just move it to your Windows drive. It'll show up here or whatever USB drive that you connect. You can't save it to the USB drive that is running Linux because it will erase every single time that you boot. Now, if you run into any issues while trying to convert the DV tape into a digital format, just leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. If this worked for you, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.